So in this tutorial, we're going to look at three additional things that you can do with routing in Express.js that will put you on your way to becoming a professional Node and Express.js developer. So in our last tutorial, we created a dynamic route that accessed the query parameter string of a URL, which extracted a particular variable and then passed it to our template rendering system, which presented the user with a greeting. So whilst that's certainly one way of getting information from a URL path within Express.js routing, it's usually quite uncommon to use this method, with the preference being to use path parameters, where the actual data is taken from part of the URL path. So let's modify the hello route from our previous tutorial and update it to use a path parameter. So the way we define a path parameter is by using a colon and then assigning a name. So simply by adding a colon and then a variable name, we can access the data in the actual URL by accessing the params property of the request object that will contain an object that has any path parameters. And just to make this a little bit different and to distinguish between the previous example, we can actually change the name of the path parameter to anything that we like. So let's update it to person, for example. Of course, I've just left that comment in there to show you the full path of this route. We don't actually need it for this to work. But you can see I can name that path parameter anything and it'll be available within the params object. All we need to do is pick it out by its actual name. So let's rerun the app just to check that's still working. And I'll actually run the project using Nodemon as we'll be making several changes to this routing file and it'll just save me from having to restart the application each time. So with the application running, let's just head back over to the browser and check that we can still render our template. So you can see this time when I access the hello root, I actually don't use a query string, it's just everything after the forward slash after hello is considered the path parameter which is assigned to person. And just to demonstrate, you can have as many path parameters in a URL as you like. Let's pass another data from a path parameter to our template. And we'll utilize it with inside of our template. You can see after we pass the person's name, after the forward slash, the second path parameter is then stored in the greeting property of the params object. So seen in the last couple of examples, how we can send a HTML document via a template back to a user when they access a URL. But there are other types of data that we can send back to the user, including JSON data. So let's create a new get root, and this time we'll send back some JSON data instead of rendering a template. So here I've just created another root with inside of our hello namespace. And all it does is on the result object, instead of calling a render or a send function, we're actually sending a JSON function, which as the name suggests, will send back JSON data based on the object that we pass inside of the parentheses. And the object I'm passing back simply has one property of time, which should display the current time as an ISO string. So let's head back to our browser and just see what the result of that looks like. So you can see when we access the root, we actually get JSON data back instead of a template. And we can confirm that in our developer tools. When we look at the request to the time endpoint, you can see it's a get request and we've got a status of 200 back. But if we look at the response headers, you can see that the content type that's been returned is application JSON. And that's a header that Express has set for us automatically. And it's just another example of how Express has got all of the convenience built in. And we don't really need to worry about what headers we're sending back as long as we use the right functions within our routing modules. So along with responding with different types of data, we mentioned in the previous tutorial that Express is set up to accept data based on different HTTP verbs. And you might have noticed in the routing modules that we've created, the function that we're actually calling on the router is get. And that's not a coincidence because it's the name of the HTTP verb that we want to set up the route for. So if you examine the router object itself, you can see we've got functions available for post, put, patch, as well as delete. So if you're not familiar with all of the HTTP verbs, don't worry about it too much. Just think of get requests as requesting data from the server 
And the most common way of sending data to a server is the, a post request. So when you think of filling out a form on a website or submitting any other type of data, generally you're sending a post request to the server, which does some processing with that data. So to finish off the tutorial, let's just create a post endpoint on our hello routing module. So I've created a route which will be in the hello namespace which is just forward slash hash and I've imported the crypto module. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually extract the data that's sent to express via this post request. And when you're using a post request you get a special property on the request object which is body. And by default this is set up to accept JSON data and it's automatically parsed for us so a JSON object that's sent in can be accessed in the same way as a normal JavaScript object. So I'll expect a property in that object of plain text. And I'm going to use that to create a simple MD5 hash. And I could send this to a template but let's just send it back as JSON data. So to test this, I actually need to send a post request to our Express application, which I could do by creating a HTML form and then submitting the form with the required data. But an easier way to test these sort of endpoints is to use a program like Postman to send a post request and review the data that's returned. So let's create a new post request within Postman. And we'll enter the path of our post endpoint. And if I was to send this just as is, You'll see we get a really big error in our output, and that's because we haven't sent any data, and when we call the hash.update function, so let's actually pass some data in and see the response. So our body obviously expects an object that has a property of plain text, and I've just passed the value of that as password, so now when we send the request, you can see in our output we've got a JSON response, that has the original plain text and also the hash that's been generated from the crypto library. So we've covered a lot of the basics of setting up additional routing within Express.js. You'll really get your head around routing when you start setting up your own projects. And of course we'll do that in a few lessons time. But for now you can experiment with setting up your own routes and either sending those to render via a template or to send back some JSON data, depending on what you need to do.